Hello and welcome to the Apostolic Teachings Podcast. This episode is a part of the media ministry of the Honorable Bishop Paul A. Weatherly. This episode was recorded during one of our Bible studies that take place on Sunday mornings, Thursday nights, and our Young People's Tuesday night Bible class. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the message. Let me change that. Every time God draws people to a certain house or a certain dwelling. Because the Bible says no man comes unless he draws. We know that. That's right. So every person that comes to those doors, God has drawn them here for his purpose. It may not be what you think when you get here. You may think you're here for this or for that, but God has a design that he is placed in here. Mm -hmm. He has a purpose for this church. And I was told some time back that maybe the church doesn't really know the vision that God has given you. Maybe you should lay out the vision of the Lord so that people would be able to maybe understand or maybe even buy in to the vision. Because if you don't catch on to the vision God has given me, A lot of people have already not caught on. And they're no longer here because of that. God gives one man a vision. And it's our responsibility to catch his vision. Yes, that's right. Anything that has more than one vision is usually a freak show. That does not mean that God cannot give you a vision, but it will not be in opposition of what he's given the man of God. Right, right. Amen. He will not give an individual a vision that contradicts what the man of God has already laid out. Mm-hmm. Right. I know there's exceptions when the man of God has gone crazy. I understand all that. It's happened. Mm-hmm. But if you have a prayerful Loving man of God. Mm-hmm. It's your responsibility to catch on to the vision. Right. Right. The vision God gave me was long before I ever even talked about pastoring. I had no desire mm-hmm. to pastor. All right. Right. I knew what it was like. I lived in a pastor's home. Mm-hmm. Some of us know about that. And once you've lived in a pastor's home and you see all of the hell, Amen. I'll say it again, honey, right? Mm-hmm. Talk about all it. that the husband and the wife and the children have to go through putting up with safe folks. All right. Yep. And I put that in quotations. Uh-huh. Yep. So I had no desire, even though I knew at seven years old, I was supposed to pastor the church. A church. And I ran as fast and as hard as I could run. And I tried to make myself filthy enough that God would not use me in the capacity that He wanted me. All right. Well, we see how that worked out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My device wasn't good enough. But when I got here, I served a man faithfully. Mm -hmm. Some of you were here when he made his appearance. Sister Williams, you remember when my old pastor came here? Stood in his pulpit and admonished the people to grab a hold Mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. Made statements that I was the only person that never caused him a bit of trouble in his church in all the 50 years that he'd been in the ministry. Bragging, stating facts. Mm -hmm. I did not want to pastor. Brother Jackson invited me to go to a church in Claremore. And every year they have what they call the Spirit of Antioch. Just another program, another service. I'm not against them. They have the sign of the 
times or whatever. And in over in Kansas, Kansas City, they have the passing of the mantle, different kinds of meetings. I went there because my friend, Pastor Jackson, who I was preaching for evangelistically a lot, said, well, you go with me. I think I was going with him just to comfort him as much as anything. When we went there, a man out of Pastor Wayne Hutley's church stood in the pulpit. Lanthorpe was his name. And he said, I want everybody to worship. I was sitting up. A little further back than where Brother Graham would be. I had my hands in the air and I was worshiping the Lord. My eyes were closed. Just telling God how much I loved him. And the Lord took a picture. I seen a picture in my mind. Of standing in a pulpit. Looking at. Two swinging doors with diamond doors, diamond glass in them. And a sound system, sound podium, whatever you are, whatever that is over there. Sound booth, thank you, sister. I got to thinking in my own carnal mind, is this some kind of a flashback? Of a service right. down through the years that I've been around Pentecost back then for around 50 some years. Is this a church service that I'm just now coming back to mind? Maybe the Spirit of the Lord is so strong, I'm feeling the same that I was trying to understand it. And while I was trying to understand it, mm -hmm. the preacher said, now God has given you a picture. Somebody in here, God has given a picture to hold on to till he brings it to fruition. And the Holy Ghost fell on me. I went to speak in tongues and I felt the power of God and the witness of the Spirit. After that service was just about ended, the people were in the aisles and praying and seeking the Lord. Brother Shatwell from in Okima was there. And I was drawn to go to him. I asked him to pray for me. I said, Brother Shatwell, will you pray for me? He said, what do you want? I said, I want boldness to do what God wants me to do. Now, I have laid hands on many people. I have prayed for people and they fell out the floor like dead people. But I never had it happen to me. And I started to wonder, why is all these people falling out? Is it real? Do I really have the power of God that I, I think I do? And yet nowhere has anyone ever prayed for me in that fashion. Now those thoughts weren't there that night but they were there for a long while because I kept laying hands on people when I was evangelizing and watching them fall out. It's laying in the spirit. That doesn't happen to you. Yeah. But that night Brother Chatwell laid his hands and prayed for holy boldness to do what God said do. And I fell out like a dead man. I came to a while later don't know how long I was laying there. But I came to. And that changed. All right. I continued on evangelizing for just a little. About a year. Maybe a year and a half. About a year of assistant pastoring. Different things going on. Working in the ministry. And God allowed me to come to this place over nine years ago last month. Me and Brother Odell and his wife and my wife sat here in this parking lot. Brother Odell went by and took oil 
and anointed the doors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Went around every door and anointed it while I called the man that was on the real estate on the side. He said, the real estate man, Mr. Fisher, said, can you give me about 15 minutes? I said, yes, sir. We're waiting. I had already told God, Lord, if nobody else comes with me, I know I can afford $500 a month. I know that we don't have money to do anything with, so it'll have to be a lease to own. Because we can't buy nothing. I don't have any money. We had $3,400 in the bank that my wife and me had been putting back mm -hmm. for the ministry. The man met us here and stood, I stood right about the third row right there where that chair is there with the Kleenex box in it. Stood right there, there was pews at that time with Mr. Fisher. And he said, it's going to be, and he said sheepishly, $500 a month. And I said, okay. With a little chuckle. He said, now we're having issues with the lease or with the papers. The title, I think is what he said. So it'll have to be a lease to own. And I chuckled. Okay. He said, now I'm going to need six months in advance. I said, so you're talking about $3,000? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I said, can you give me about 15 minutes? He said, take all the time you want. There may be other people who will be interested in it. It's no hurry. I said, no. Can you give me 15 minutes? Do you want cash or check? <laughs> what he didn't know is that just before I went down there, I came up here to this. And I looked back. At the time that I did that, those doors were not there. We put them doors there. Right, right, right. It was a solid door with a diamond mm -hmm. on both of the doors to look through, like the old time front door house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And they were swinging doors. And the platform there, the sound booth, everything that God has shown me was right here. What I seen in the vision was this place here. That's what caused me to go like I went. Right. Everything I asked God for, he did it. Amen. And you know, probably have heard, that was on Saturday, I had to go preach for the state elder on Sunday. Walked into the church on Sunday morning. They were going to have Sunday school. And a little old lady, Sister Pat, Sister Haley. Mm -hmm. She was bent over and couldn't hardly straighten up. Mm -hmm. Soon as she walked in, she got that big smile. Brother Weatherly. I said, how are you doing, Sister Pat? And I gave her a big hug. And she put something in my hand. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want to bless your ministry. Now you have to remember that I've given $3,000 away or going to give $3,000 away. Right. The leaves is with $400 and my wife, being a businesswoman, mm -hmm. said you've got to be crazy. Basically. Yeah. We need lights, we need gas, we need water and that all has to be deposits. Yeah. So don't worry about it. She gave me $1,000. Mm -hmm. She didn't know. I never told a soul. Right. Saturday, we did this. Nobody in that town knew what was going on. Right. Somebody else walked up to me and handed me $500. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to bless your ministry. I've not spoken to them. Before I left that night after preaching, I was given a check for $1,000. 
Now we had gave, me and my wife had gave them $500 to hold it. So they could get the right paperwork because when they came here to do the paperwork, they didn't have a lease to own. They had a rental. Right. And he said, I'm sorry, I need to come back Tuesday and give you the right one lease to own. Everything, me being your pastor, you know probably pretty well, on the ride home, I threw the stuff and said, here, you worried about it now? I was a little cocky because I had $2,500. I hear you. What I'm saying is, is that God had already planned all of this here. You wonder why I'm here or why I feel like I'm in the right place. God designed every bit of that. And the first church we looked at was on 2nd and... Across from the bank. Second and. No, it ain't second, is it? If it's by Adams Road, that is Second Street. Lord Jesus, help me. Brother Glenn and them lived on that street. You lived on that street. Um. She don't even remember the street she lived on. Do you? You and your mom lived on the White House with Robert. And Brother Glenn lived in the Yellow House. The point is, is that we looked at that first. And God gave us this. I offered 100000 for that church. And God gave us this church. And all the land for forty-five thousand. That needed a roof. That needed a heat and air. That needed all kinds of things. But it was there at that building that God spoke to me and said, "You're going to need more than one church in this city." Okay. And when you get one of these up, and you get it ready. And he delivered me the scripture where Jesus fed the 5,000. He said, this is a pattern. He had the word of God that he broke up and he delivered it to the preachers, to the apostles. Mm -hmm. right. He took the bread and broke it and blessed it. Mm -hmm. Gave it to those. The fishes he broke up. He had them sit in fifties and hundreds. God said, this is my pattern. I don't care what nobody else does. You can have a church 5,000. Doesn't matter to me. I'll tell you what God spoke to me. This is my pattern. When you get 50 or so people, start another work. Why do you think I'm pushing? It isn't about having so many people here. It's about getting to the place All right. where God gave me a vision to do another church. He gave me the option. You can give somebody else this church and go start another one. Or you can stay here and send somebody to another one. But there needs to be two churches in Sand Springs because you can't get them all in here. Mm -hmm. Right. No matter which church it was. Mm -hmm. So if you understand tonight that the vision is not about me building up my kingdom, it's about Making more places for people to worship. Mm -hmm. That's right. And to have a sister church that believes and has fellowship like we do. Mm -hmm. That is born out of the same ministry. All right. So there ain't a bunch of crazy thoughts mm -hmm. and a bunch of crazy ideas and a bunch of crazy things that people just like you mm -hmm. can find a place of rest without judgment, mm -hmm. ridicule. And funny looks. A place where you can come and feel like this is my church and I can worship freely. That's the whole vision that God has given me. And I've tried my best to follow him in that direction. I'm trying to get you to follow that. 
and to catch on to the vision. But I'm going to tell you, I cannot do it by myself. I have been carrying the load of this church for nine years. Amen to that. Amen. I've been carrying the load of the finances. Mm -hmm. I've been carrying the load of the workmanship. Amen. I've been carrying the load of the people. All right. I've been carrying the load of the problems. Amen. I've been carrying the load of those that have come for confession. Amen. I've been carrying the load of making sure we have a place Amen. that has a place of worship and free from all of the judgment. Free from all of the craziness Amen. and all the clicks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. A place, and I've been carrying it. Mm -hmm. And it's time for me to quit carrying it all by myself. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. It's time to have some deacons. It's time to have some lay members. It's time to have some people that support the church. Amen. Right. With or without the means. I got an amen corner. Thank you, sis. I got somebody that I got my back tonight. All right. She probably gonna be a singer like her mama. She ain't scared. My heart, my vision is easy to see. I need the church to fall in love with the vision All right. and say, I, Lord, want to be a part of of your vision, Lord. All right. Not pastor's vision. I want to be a part of your vision, Lord. Because it came from God. All right. If it didn't come from God, I wouldn't be here. I would have left a long time ago like every other charlatan. Mm -hmm. Right. But I cannot go. I cannot leave. Right. Okay. I'm under a mandate from God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have had it easy. They just get up and go. Some don't say a word, they just walk out. Some get mad because of the way I preach. Some get mad because I don't cotter to them. Some get mad because I preach and teach that you've got to be a financial helper in the church. Some people get mad because I say you can't live shacked up. People get mad because I preach you can't be a homosexual. People get mad when you start preaching what God said do. But that's not going to change. I have not taken the tithes that belong to the ministry that belong to me. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. I have not taken your offerings and bought me nothing. In fact, most of the time, it bothers me when I get gifts from the church. Because I'm not here for the gifts. I'm here for the souls. But a pastor's wife told me just a little while back, just a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks back, she was telling me how much the church did for their pastor. They gave him all kinds of gifts and gave him a large sum of money. I want a large sum of people. If there's somebody that's left this church and you know, you ought to be pleading with them to come back. All right. Not for me, but for their soul's sake. I've called people that left the church and they won't even return a call. The enemy has tried to divide this church since the day it was born. Yes, they have. And if you think he's going to give up, <laughs> see, it looks like we're on the ropes now. It looks like we're at the end now. But if that's your mentality, you're not in line with me. That's right. The beginning of the year, I told the church that we are going to rise up. But I can't raise you up. I'm trying to raise myself up. You're going to have to get a heart for God and for the work of God and for the Dedication of the Lord. We as a church have to do it. So now you know my plan. You can't say I don't know what we're here for. Or why we're here. 
You can't say it. I don't understand what he's doing. You know exactly what I'm doing. And I need your help because we are the hands and feet of the Lord. I think somebody told me that just shortly back. We're the hands and the feet of the Lord. That might have been Sister Graham. I don't know. She's all right. What y'all worried about that girl for? Oh. She's all right. We need some of these raised up to know the Lord. She needs a Sunday school class. With other such things here. Right. Yes, and God will do it. If we'll do our part, God will bring it. So church, I love you. I love every one of you with all my heart. I would never do anything to hurt you. I would never purposely offend you. But we've got to do some things different this year. We're already a quarter of the year gone. All the things we've planned, we need to execute. Yes. We need to get into the communities and start having a purpose and a plan and have a face where people know that we are here and that we're here to help. Would you stand with us? Great God, I love you today and I thank you for your loving kindness and your mercy, for your love. Lord, we ask today that you would allow us to grasp a hold of your wisdom, your vision, your purpose. Thank you again for joining us and tuning in to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to hear more lessons like these, you can find us at Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ on Facebook. We're located at 614 North Franklin Avenue, Sand Springs, Oklahoma, if you would like to attend service. God bless. Thank you.